I am Amy Witherden at the Institute for Security Studies, meeting Isaka Suare to discuss African opposition politics and why incumbent governments cannot be solely blamed for a lack of change in leadership. Isaka, you say in your paper that democracy is not defined by multi-party systems with regular changes in leadership. Please explain your reasoning. Um, what I mean is that uh, in a multi-party democratic system, regular changes of leadership is not necessary for it to be qualified as democratic. You could have democracy whereby you have um, one leader that stays in power for many years, but who is re-elected. Um, so you can still consider that system as being democratic, even though um, you don't have regular changes. Um, examples include, for example, um, Helmut Kohl in Germany. He was in power for about 18 years. Margaret Thatcher in the United Kingdom, she was in power for about 12 years. And that didn't make their countries non-democratic, but it is a desirable feature of democracy that you have regular changes of government. How many changes in governance in Africa have there been since the general adoption of democracy? The reintroduction of multi-party democracy in Africa dates back to the early 1990s, which is considered by some as the third wave of democratization. Since then, there have been about 40 um, peaceful leadership alternations on the continent. Um, that, um, when I say peaceful, excludes other um, ways in which um, leaders have been changed on the continent. For example, through military coups, you've had um, a number of uh, such changes on the continent, or the natural death of the president um, in office. So um, you have, by and large, about 40 peaceful post-election changes of leadership on the continent. Please outline how some of these opposition victories came about. So when I say 40 changes of leadership, these have not all been in favor of the opposition. Okay. Actually, the share of the opposition can be brought down to about 16 instances. Um, so the majority of these changes have benefited only the ruling um, governments or the ruling parties. Um, the way in which opposition um, victories um, have occurred has been mainly in two party systems or in bipolarized systems. Um, two party systems are systems in which um, two main political parties, amongst others, dominate the political scene on a more or less equal footing. That is, two parties controlling about 80% of seats or votes in consecutive elections. It doesn't mean that there are no other parties, but these two parties um, are the main parties. Bipolarized one is when the myriad political parties come together to form a coalition, which will then make the system as a de facto or uh, ad hoc two party system. So the majority of changes have been in systems that have two main parties or when the opposition have come together and form a coalition. Why do you think such regime changes are so unusual in Africa? Well, because uh, these two conditions, having a two-party system or a bipolarized system, even though they are not sufficient to effect change, they are necessary to effect change. And because having a two-party system doesn't depend entirely on the opposition, the only way that is sure and is available to the opposition is actually to come together. And the opposition has failed to do that. So that is the main reason why it hasn't been so. Because in all the instances, uh, these, one of these two conditions have been met. So given that the opposition has the ability to meet the other condition, which is to come together, and they have failed to do that, um, that explains the rarity of uh, these changes. How could opposition parties turn these trends around? Well, it's actually to um, um, adopt that strategy. Um, you look at practical examples um, across the continent. In all the instances where you have had the change of government, um, by an opposition party. Um, as I said, um, it has been in these countries. You take um, Cape Verde, 
uh, you've had two changes there in 1991 and 2001. You have Ghana in 2000 and 2008. You have Sierra Leone in 2007. All these are two party systems. Then you have opposition parties um, winning through coalitions in Zambia in 1991, in Senegal in 2000, in Kenya in 2002. So it is for the opposition to rally behind one credible candidate amongst them. It is not sufficient to rally behind someone, but someone who is credible. Mm -hmm. And then if you um, coalesce behind such a credible uh, candidate, you are then in a position to um, um, have a power that can be compared to that of the ruling party. And if you have ill-intentioned ruling regimes that are keen on rigging, that force the coalition might dissuade them actually from rigging because uh, you have many people in Africa that don't vote not because they want they don't want to vote but be, they don't see a candidate to vote for they don't have any trust in the opposition winning and they don't want to waste their vote so if you have that formidable opposition coalition then you can restore the hope of such people in the system and then if they come together and the ruling party sees that formidable coalition they would be dissuaded from rigging and if they don't rig and you have that power the opposition is likely to win now south africa is a democracy with one dominant party in power and this doesn't seem likely to change anytime soon do you see a similar pattern in South African opposition politics? Well, um, the South African opposition parties, if they were to come together, they could curtail the dominance of the ANC. Um, if you take the last elections in April, um, many people thought that with the split of the ANC, the emergence of um, the Congress of the People, COPE in abbreviation, uh, that could have, um, uh, be a major setback for the ANC. Um, it didn't turn out to be like that. The reason being that all the opposition parties decided to go solo. Um, if the DA and COPE, um, just theoretically, although in practical terms, um, you have also other conditions uh, that need to be met in order for there to be a sustained uh, um, coalition. But say uh, two main opposition parties were to come together, it is sure they may not have won, but they could have won some seats at the national um, uh, provincial level to um, reduce the dominance of the ANC. The same applies to, to Botswana again. So um, the strategy is in unity, unity of the opposition against the ruling party if you really want to effect change. If you are disunited, then it can only be in favor of the ruling party. People may be disaffected or dissatisfied with the ruling party, but in that case, they have two choices. Either not to vote, abstain in the majority of cases, or vote for an alternative, but the alternative must be equal to the task. And if you disunited, you aren't, unfortunately. So you need a strong, united and credible opposition. That is correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Saka. My pleasure.